When His All Holiness Bartholomew was enthroned as Ecumenical Patriarch in November 1991, he became the 270th in a line that stretches back unbroken to St. Andrew, the first called of the 12 apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, the spiritual leader of the world's hundreds of millions of Orthodox Christians, has brought the message of Orthodox Christianity into every level of international and intercultural discussion. To be an Orthodox Christian is to be fully engaged and committed to solving the problems of our world. Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew gives a consistent clarion call that silence in the face of injustice and indifference is unacceptable and even sinful. Never has his voice, his prophetic proclamation of faith, been more urgently needed than it is today. Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew serves as a steady and firm advocate for the critical issues of our day. The environment, unity among Orthodox Christians worldwide, peace, love, and reconciliation between all peoples and faiths, and the spiritual mission of the Mother Church of Constantinople. To commit a crime against the natural world is a sin. For human beings to destroy the biological diversity of God's creation. For human beings to contaminate the Earth's waters, its land, its air, and its life. All of these are sins. His dedication and his creative initiatives on behalf of the protection of the environment have earned Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew the title Green Patriarch. Continuing the visionary work of his predecessor, Ecumenical Patriarch Demetrius, his All Holiness brings to light for all people the connection between God's creation and the human person. He has reached out to mobilize religious leaders, scientists, environmentalists, journalists, and leading policymakers to work together developing solutions for the crises facing our planet. His environmental symposia have traveled around the globe to bear witness to the destruction of God's creation from the polluted Gulf of Finland to the toxic waste site of Porto Romano, Albania, from the diminishing rainforests of the Amazon to the endangered Baltic and Black Seas, from the melting glaciers of Greenland to the mighty Mississippi River. What he has done is very important because the symposium were attended by people from all countries, all religions, all cultures, all languages, all sciences. It's very difficult to speak adequately about the quality, the magnitude, and the tremendous implications of the patriarchal contribution to save the environment as a creation of God. Laboring for decades for the cause of the environment, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew has received recognition from prestigious organizations such as Time Magazine as one of its 100 most influential people in the world. He has been named Champion of the Earth by the United Nations, honored by Scenic Hudson with the International Visionary Award, and won Norway's Sophie Prize for his creative approach to solving environmental problems. He was also featured on the cover of the New York Times after his 2006 visit to New Orleans following Hurricane Katrina. During his visit to the United States in 1997, he met with Vice President Al Gore, one of the world's best known environmentalists and Nobel Peace Prize laureate. Your All Holiness, you have seen the excitement that your visit has generated among Americans of all faiths. 
But it does not surprise us that your message should resonate so deeply in America. We are a broadly diverse country, and you are known for your ability to bring diverse peoples together across the lines that too often divide us. You're known over the world for removing the barriers that separate people from each other, from their God, and from the natural environment. Your All Holiness, your eloquent teachings on the sanctity of the earth have won you the affectionate and respectful title of the Green Patriarch and have inspired many of us in our work on the environment. His All Holiness's love for God's creation embraces love for every human person. As Orthodox Christians, we are called to support and stand up for the innocent and defenseless victims of religious oppression, racism, and intolerance. Ultimately, we are called to work for peace in every part of our world. The Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople literally stands on the cusp of East and West. His All Holiness is a living bridge between the great religious traditions of the earth, Christendom, Judaism, Islam. The Ecumenical Patriarch's roles as the primary spiritual leader of Orthodox Christianity and a transnational figure of global significance continued to become more vital each day. He co-sponsored the Peace and Tolerance Conference in Istanbul in 1994, bringing together Jews, Christians, and Muslims. He has convened a long line of conferences and interventions to promote peace and interfaith cooperation, addressing crises in Bosnia and Kosovo, and bringing together religious leaders and heads of government in Bern, Switzerland, where the Bern Declaration condemned violence in the name of religion. His All Holiness has traveled to the Muslim countries of Bahrain, Iran, Qatar, Azerbaijan, and Libya to promote reconciliation. And soon after the terrorist attacks of 9-11, he called an interfaith conference in Brussels, co-sponsored by the European Union, declaring war in the name of religion is a crime against religion. These endeavors, together with his inspiring efforts on behalf of religious freedom and human rights, rank Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew among the world's foremost apostles of love, peace, and reconciliation. Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew has continued the work of his predecessors toward reconciliation of the Orthodox and Catholic churches. In 2002, in Ravenna, Italy, the Ecumenical Patriarch promoted environmental responsibility in unison with Pope John Paul II. After the Divine Liturgy celebrated by His All Holiness at the historic church of Santa Polinaire in Ravenna, the Ecumenical Patriarch and the Pope, via satellite link, signed a common declaration on environmental ethics. When we signed this statement of environmental commitment, it was as if two lungs of a single body were expressing a fervent desire to breathe the clean air of an unpolluted world. Later in 2004, in an act of love and reconciliation and at the fraternal request of His All Holiness, Pope John Paul II returned the holy relics of the ecumenical patriarch's own predecessors on the throne of the Apostle Andrew St. John Chrysostom and St. Gregory the Theologian to their rightful place at the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Since the election of Pope Benedict XVI, the two leaders have worked diligently for mutual reconciliation, meeting in reciprocal visits to each other's sees, most visibly in 2006 when the Pope made his first visit to a Muslim country. Despite some protests around the papal visit, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew joined hands with His Holiness in an act of solidarity and mutual goodwill. The Patriarch saw the need 
in promoting the gospel and Christianity of East and West. And he did it participating himself, visiting the West, receiving visits from the West. So this is not simply a promotion of dialogues among theologians. This is a promotion of personal contact, face to face, eye to eye, of the top leaders in order to promote cooperation and effective action in promoting Christianity in contemporary world. His All Holiness has also served as a president of the World Council of Churches, which includes most Protestant and Orthodox Christian churches. He has met with leaders of international Jewish communities, visited Israel, and has made many visits to Muslim countries. His All Holiness also visited most of Western and Eastern Europe, and when he went to Cuba, he became the first ecumenical patriarch to visit Latin America. In 1997, he received the United States Congressional Gold Medal in recognition of his outstanding and enduring contributions toward religious understanding and peace from the Congress and President William Jefferson Clinton. And in 2002, His All Holiness met separately with President Bush at the White House and Secretary of State Colin Powell at the State Department, where they recognized the enduring significance of his tireless efforts on behalf of world peace and cooperation. The Worldwide Orthodox Christian Church recognizes the ecumenical patriarch as first among equals. His authority as ecumenical patriarch is enshrined in the seven ecumenical councils of the undivided Christian church. He convenes and presides over all inter-orthodox meetings of the heads of the autocephalous churches as the first throne among the churches. The tenure of Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew has seen tremendous progress in the unity among Orthodox jurisdiction around the world. He has presided over the restoration of the Autocephalous Church of Albania and the Autonomous Church of Estonia, providing a constant source of spiritual and moral support to those traditionally Orthodox countries emerging from decades of wide-scale religious persecution behind the Iron Curtain. As soon as he was elected, he convened a meeting in Constantinople of the heads of the Tocephalus churches. That was quite an event. Since then, he has been involved continuously in inter-Orthodox meetings which he organized in resolving issues. A tremendous step towards unification, towards common work of these 250 to 300 million Orthodox people. Whatever happens in terms of promoting cooperation and unity would be really due to this indefatigable and untiring patriarch who runs the universe to save the universe. Turkey does not understand nor does it appreciate the treasure it has in the person of the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew. The radical nationalists have burned his figure in effigy. The government has uncovered a plot to assassinate him by retired military officers. Local prosecutors take him to court for what? Conducting religious services. Radicals have thrown hand grenades into the patriarchal compound and the government itself is complicit in the daily intimidation of the person and the institution of the ecumenical patriarchate with its own official policies denying legal personality to the mother church, interfering in the election of the ecumenical patriarch, confiscating its properties and shutting down Chalki, its own local seminary that served the Orthodox Christian churches around the world. Whether in Washington, D.C., or the state capitals of each of the 50 states, the Archons of America are fighting for the religious freedom of the Mother Church. 
in Brussels, Belgium, at the headquarters of the European Union, or in Warsaw, Poland, at Europe's largest human rights meetings, the Archons of America are fighting for the religious freedom of the ecumenical patriarchate. In Strasbourg, France, the home of the European Court of Human Rights, the Archons are fighting for religious freedom. Let me tell you, as long as the government of Turkey continues its repressive policies, denying fundamental, unalienable religious freedom and human rights to the ecumenical patriarchate, the Archons will never, never yield one millimeter in our struggle until the bells of freedom can be heard emanating from the Fanar and signaling to the free world that religious freedom is finally a reality in Turkey. I would like you, first of all, to uh, express publicly our thanks to the Archons of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, who, under the leadership of Dr. Liberakis and with a group of people who are totally dedicated to the cause of the Patriarch, uh, have done a terrific work, a work that involved visits and dialogue with uh, Turkish authorities, with international authorities in the European Union, in European countries, helping states and politicians to participate in issuing declarations in support of the Patriarchate. It's a tremendous work. I commend the work and I commend the Archons. Visionary for the solutions to problems plaguing our world, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew fills every day with a vital, living message that is equally experienced by heads of state and ordinary people. But for Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, every person is extraordinary, each one a living, breathing icon of the triune God. Because first, foremost, and above all, he is a servant of the church, a servant of Christ the Lord, a servant of all humanity. Throughout the two millennia of Christianity, the Orthodox Church has been blessed to have extraordinary ecumenical patriarchs, archbishops of Constantinople. And now, in the tradition of these spiritual giants, is our own beloved and pious Bartholomew the 270th to hold the sacred throne of St. Andrew, who I believe has been placed on this earth to secure the very future of the ecumenical patriarchate. His All Holiness will overcome the repression and the intimidation of state policies and forces of evil so that the spiritual center of the Orthodox world will continue to radiate its ecclesiastical, theological, and canonical leadership and brilliance for the millennia to come. The Archons of America express our profound gratitude to your All Holiness for your visionary and courageous leadership. Ispola et i Vespota, Ispola et i Vespota, Axios, Axios, Axios. It's a great joy, it's a great pride, it's a thankfulness to God of immense proportions to have this patriarch, the environmental uh, champion, the dialogue champion, the inter-Orthodox champion, to have it in this country and on this ground, which aims at being a champion for peace, justice, freedom, and progress for all human beings. So our warmest welcome to our ecumenical patriarch and our joy to have him with us these days. <laughs>